2 Kings chapter 6, and the title of our message this morning is Our Invisible Enemy, Our Invisible Enemy, 2 Kings chapter 6. I want us to leave this morning knowing that the Bible says we have three enemies, the world, Okay, what do you mean the world? The world system. Turn the television off. They're lying to you. Don't believe everything in the newspaper. They're lying too. The world and then the flesh. You say, who's, what's the flesh? That's you. That's the, we're stuck in this flesh. Okay. The Bible says the heart is deceitful. It's desperately wicked. That deceitful is the same word as, as, as Jacob. Jacob was a deceiver for 21 years of his life. Just, just one trick scheme. He was a schemer. Our heart, our heart lies to us. So we have, we have the world as an enemy. We have the flesh, okay? And then we have the devil, by the way, the devil has very much influenced the world. And much of what's going on in the world is uh, this whole thing about evolution. Okay? Where'd that come from? That, was spo spo that, was, that, was, that came from hell. Okay? That came from the devil. Um, and so this morning, I want us just to understand that not everything that's going on in your life is, is because of your wife. Or should I say, not everything that's going on in your life is because of your husband. Now, he may have allowed Satan to influence him, but we have an invisible enemy. We have an invisible enemy. Some of us, I hate to say it, we, just, we, we live too much in this world mentally. Okay? There is an invisible world. Okay? You know, we don't believe there's a spook around every corner, but there's probably more spooks than you think. Look at 2 Kings chapter 6, verse number 8. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. Now, this is... The king is just saying, he's telling some of his servants, here's part of our military strategy. Just saying, we're going to be at this place at this time. We're going to be at this, this, this place uh, at a camp and so forth. Verse 9. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel saying, by the way, the king of Syria is fighting with the king of Israel. So this, this changes scenes here. Okay. We go from the seeing of the king who warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, uh, our, our, our camp will be at this place. And then the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. Now look up here. God told the man of God what the king of Syria was going to do. So the man of God got word to the king of Israel. Well, let me just say this. I, I have a sacred position of pastor. Um, I'm not worthy, as, as Paul said. I mean, I count, it, I count it an honor to be in the ministry. But sometimes I'll say something, and you think someone told me, and, they did, and they, someone did. God. In other words, I'll preach behind the pulpit and say, who told them? God, the Holy Spirit told me. But I don't know as you, Raul, it just so happens that God told me to say something, and I said it, and the Holy Spirit said, that's for you, and you got mad because you think John told me about your sin. Got to figure it out now? Yeah, he thinks so. He's trying to figure it out. Um, I'm kidding, sort of. <laughs> Verse 9 again, the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place. He said, Hey, listen, the king of Syria is going to be in that camp. God told him. Um, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for thither the Syrians are come down. Verse 10, and the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him 
of and saved himself there not once nor twice. You know, he said, he said this was, this was it, it seems that there were, he said not once or twice. So at least more than twice, at least three or more times. You know, he said, he said that because he listened to the man of God, somehow in a spiritual way, they were able to escape the enemy's strategy. Verse 11, therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. You say, what do you mean? They kept, he's going, how do, how do they know where we are? You know, they, they, you can, I think, and I'm, I'm not a general or, or in the military, but, but you can sort of know if there's a spy in the camp. It's like someone's telling these guys something. But it says in, in the verse 11, therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, will you not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? He, you know, he's saying there's a spy in the camp. You guys need to go out there and tell us who, who's telling the king of Israel where we keep going because we can see that there's, there's a spy in the camp. By the way, who's the spy? God's the spy. Okay. Verse 12, and one of his servants said, none, my Lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. Whoa. He said, no, nope, we found out somehow where the leak spread that Elisha was telling the king of Israel about the Syrian military strategy. Verse 13, I like what he, by the way, I like what he said. He says, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. Do you know God knows everything that we say even behind closed doors? This is the king. I'm sure he had guards. He had the utmost protection, but God still knew what he was saying. God knows what's going on in every part of our life, okay? Look at verse 14, verse 13. And he said, go and spy where he is. So the king of Syria says, go find Elisha. Elisha. We need to get this guy. By the way, if they kill Elisha, God's going to raise someone else up. You can't kill what God's doing. So they're going to come and they're going to go, let's go get Elisha. You're not fighting Elisha, you're fighting God. So go get Elisha. He said, go and spy where he is that I may send and fetch him. Must have been a, from southern Syria. He said, go fetch him. And it was told him saying, behold, he's in Dothan. Do you remember Dothan? Uh, so they go <clears throat> to look for Elisha, verse 14. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots in a great host. By the way, he knows he's, 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 he, Elisha, he, he, he understands that God's on his side. By the way, this Syrian, it, it's amazing how dumb lost people are. Folks, you can't fight God. You, you can't fight against God. So here he is, he's going, man, he's got a God that is telling him things in his little room there. What I'm saying to my troops to my leaders, we're going to bring out reinforcements to go over there and get him. You can't get big enough reinforcements to get something from God. So he's got these chariots, these horses. Man, he pulls out all the stops. Verse 14, therefore send he thither horses and chariots and a great host to get one guy. And they came by night. I mean, they're going to do a sneak attack on the prophet. I love this story. And they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early, okay, the man of God had one of his workers, probably one of the young prophet guys that were training to be prophets, prophets in training, he woke up early, the sun's coming up, and gone forth, behold, and the host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots, and his servant said unto him, Ah, alas, my master, how shall we do? 
The servant gets, please look up here. So the ser- Elijah's, Elijah's still sleeping. Servant gets up. He looks and he sees this host of all these chariots and all these horse, probably all these guys with swords and bow and arrows. And he goes, whoa. I'm sure he knew they were Syrians. He knew that Israel was fighting with Syria. He knew, I'm pretty sure that he knew that the, Elisha was the one telling the king. So he's going, hey, we're duped. He said, what, he said how should we do? You know, saying, what are we going to do? Verse 16, and he answered, Elisha answered, and he answered, fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. By the way, I have written in my Bible, um, if God be for us, who can be against us? So here's these two and all these chariots, and Elisha says, hey, 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 don't worry about it. We got them outnumbered. There's nobody there. There's just these, these two guys. But let me say this. There was somebody's there. Now, we're not going to teach and preach on angels, but you know, there are angels. And we see here there are horse angels too. For all you the animal lovers, guess what? There's some horse angels. Yeah. There's an angelic force that's on our side. Is that what some of you are looking like? Yeah. Okay. God, the Bible says, beware that you, you, you know, sometimes you're entertaining angels unaware. Okay. Sometimes you, you, you're like, man, who, who, where, where'd that guy go? Where'd he go? He's a, where, where? maybe an angel. I don't see any out here today. Amen. I see a few of the others of the other brand. And, and, and verse 16, and he answered, fear not, not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Now, he, he look at verse 17. Here's the key verse. And Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. God opened Elisha's eye to see that there was an angelic army. And obviously, his servant didn't see it. And uh, Elisha prays, says, Lord, can you help my servant to see what I see? Open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire. Do you know what God's chariots had? Fire on them. Chariots of fire round about Elisha. I have written in my Bible and an and, and angelic army. Verse 18, and when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Church, let me say this. There's, there's, there's not only bad spirits, but there's good spirits. Amen? Amen. There's an invisible world, Okay. By the way, we don't need to spend all of our time trying to figure out the invisible world because we'll never, the girls were singing, it's, it's, it's cloudy. We don't, and by the way, God doesn't want us to have it all figured out. But he does want us to know there is an invisible world, okay? Now I want you to, if you would please, turn to Daniel chapter 10. You still awake on the patio? Good. We're going to stand a long time. I saw a couple people yawning. Daniel chapter 10. Daniel chapter 10 and verse 8. By the way, it's a great story. We, we don't have time to finish the story that we just read, but all of the Syrian army, they became blind. And Elisha, <laughs> the servant says, hey, let's kill, you know, should we get all, kill all these guys? But... Elisha brings them back and takes care of them, and there's a great history to it. But um, look at verse number 8 of Daniel 10. By the way, Daniel has seen a vision, okay? And Daniel's been praying for an answer from God. Look at Daniel chapter 10, verse number 8. Therefore, I was left alone and saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me. For my calmliness was turned in me into corruption, and I retained no strength. Yet heard I the voice of his words, and when I heard the voice of his words, then was I in a deep sleep on my face, and my face toward the ground. 
And behold, an hand touched me. This was an angel, that t- a good angel touched him. Which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hand. So he was sort of like on his fours, sort of like a puppy dog. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved. By the way, I'd like for an angel to say that about me. You say, what do they say about you in heaven? You're greatly beloved. Wow. By the way, I think Daniel three times has mentioned from heaven that he is one greatly beloved. I know that's not what they say about me in heaven, but I'll tell you what, I'd like for that to be. He said unto me, O Daniel, a man, verse 11, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee I am now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. I just, man, some angelic being puts his hand on my shoulder, and I look up, and he starts talking to me. I'd be trembling too. Now look at this. Then said, verse 12, he unto me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Please look up here. Daniel was praying, chastening himself, fasting, and this angel is saying, from the first day that you prayed, God heard your prayer orchestrated some of us angels up here to answer your prayer. But look what he says in the next verse. Verse 12 again. Then he said unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for the first, from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. Verse 13. But the prince, if you write in your Bibles, you might want to circle prince. This is, an, this is a demonic, angelic leader. Okay. He is a prince, a prince of Lucifer, the prince of the kingdom of Persia. There are ranks in the satanic army. Okay, this happened to be one of the princes. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one in 20, de- 20 days. So in other words, there was this, this angelic conflict, the bad the devil spirits and 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 the and the good spirits the the angels but the prince of the kingdom of persia withstood me one and twenty days but lo michael one of the chief princes good guys came to help me and i remained there with the king of persia now i am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days and these are actually prophecies that many of us understand now for yet the vision is for many days. Let's pray. Father, help us if for no other, if we just get one truth, to realize that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Lord, help, a, help us to be strong in the Lord and walk with you, walk in your word. So many Christians are duped, deceived. They've been lied to by the devil. That's why we're so cluttered in our minds. Our souls are so frustrated because we've allowed and opened ourselves up to satanic influence. And help enlighten us from your word, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated. Turn to Ephesians chapter 6, please. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. One of the greatest messages I ever heard preached that helped me as a Christian, Dr. Hiles preached the message on the invisible world. The invisible world. There is a, how many senses do we have? Five? Five senses. Okay. You know, some people say he's got a sixth sense. Sometimes, like God did for Daniel, God did for Elisha, Sometimes God allows us to have that sixth sense. The invisible world is as real as we are here today. Okay? It's real. There is an invisible world. And by the way, we're not trying to spook people. By the way, if I can spook you to fear God, I would spook you to fear God. Okay? But if we can go out of here today understanding there is an enemy of our soul. 
By the way, Satan has a, his two primary goals. Number one is so that mankind cannot be saved. That's number one. Number two is to hinder God's people from fulfilling the purpose of God. Two, and by the way, he's doing a lot. He's doing real well with number two with a lot of Christians. We were created for a purpose, and he gets us to chase things, to be confused, to be bitter, chase, we, we, we trying to, Trying, trying to get our security from somebody else. We need to get our security from God and understand we have a purpose, and Satan is trying to do everything he can to stop us from fulfilling that purpose. Look at Ephesians chapter 6. You still awake out there? By the way, it's, it's, not, it's not the time to get bored when we start talking about our enemy. Okay? And I know I can probably tell some stories to keep our attention, but one of the reasons we get caught uh, you know, ambushed. See, what's an ambush? If I understand an ambush is you weren't waiting for the enemy and they got you. I mean, that's pretty much it. Christians are getting ambushed all the time. Oh, yeah. oh, man, I can't believe what's going on. I know what's going on. Is you were not strong in the Lord. And when Satan came in like a flood, the enemy came in like a flood, you didn't lift up the standard. You blamed your wife. You blamed your boss. It was satanic in origin. By the way, if you walk with God, and I'm not a really good Christian, no amens, but I often see, I can see, I can see, I see so much I never saw before. And I don't see, I don't mean I see angels and demons, but I'll tell you what, I see the work of demons. I see the work of angels. Look at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong. Be what class? If, I can get, if you can get anything this morning, get this. We are in a battle. We do have an enemy. He does have an army. He's not omnipresent. He's not omnipotent. He's not omniscient. He doesn't know everything. He doesn't have all power. He's not everywhere, but I tell you what, he's in a lot more places than we think. And we do have an enemy, and what do we need to do, Pastor? The Bible says, be strong in the Lord. You don't need to be strong with money. You don't need to be strong. Listen, you don't, I'm all for taking care of yourself. I'm all for carrot juice. And I had my carrot orange or carrot apple this morning, and I already had some spinach this morning. Just call me Pastor Popeye. Pretty soon my face is going to start turning. I drink, I eat some. I, you say, what would you have on your spinach this morning? Nothing. I had no, I had no dressing. I had, sometimes my wife puts olive oil and stuff. I had nothing. Man, I felt like a rabbit this morning. Okay, I, I, and I exercise a little bit, okay? It doesn't look like it, but I do exercise a little bit, okay? But more important than having biceps, what do you call them, abs? Is that what you call them? What's the stomach? Six-pack? Don't tell me what you were doing last night, okay? Six-pack abs, all right? I don't know all that stuff. More important than be physically strong is to be spiritually strong. He said, finally, my brethren, be strong, verse 10, in the Lord and in the power of his might. And then he goes on to say why we need to be strong. And he also tells us a little bit how to be strong. Verse 11, he says, put on the whole armor of God. And he's saying, listen, we are in a battle. There is a fight. Those of us that are, are not saved Satan's trying to deceive you and get you to believe some false doctrine, or he's trying to get you to think that you are saved, but really you're a terror. And then those of us that are saved, he's trying to say, listen, go chase this, or be deceived by that, or get bitter about this, because God has a purpose. There's a battle. And God is saying, be strong in the Lord. He says, here's how you take on this battle. Verse 11, put on the whole armor of God. Why? that ye may be able to stand against the wiles. Everybody say wiles. Wiles is the, the, the tricks, the deceit. Satan is not going to show up like Brother Herod has the last couple weeks. Okay? He's not going to show up and, in, in you know, those of you that have watched all the, you know, nowadays, some of this stuff and, I might be somewhere, and there's a, I mean, some of the stuff that they have out, I mean, come on, man, this is major science fiction. 
these, you know, demonic beings and all that stuff. Satan comes under the radar. The Bible says he comes as an angel of light, okay? But the Lord says, be strong, verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand the wiles or the tricks of the devil. Now look at verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. By the way, please look up here. A lot of Christians are wrestling against flesh and blood. Wrestling with people and they're wrestling with their boss and they're wrestling with their neighbor and they're wrestling with everybody and what's happening They don't realize that behind what's really going on is Satan and his army trying trying to get us confused and cloudy and our minds Disrupted so that we cannot be strong to do the will of God We wrestle not against flesh and blood verse 12 and against but but, but against principalities against powers against the rulers of the darkness. Please look up here. We just read about the rulers of the darkness. The prince of Persia. By the way, some would say that different geographic places and areas, for example, maybe there's a prince of Long Beach. Okay? How do we get all these homosexuals and all this? This? How do they get a stronghold here? It just might be there's a prince here, and that was a part of his strategy to pollute part of the city. By the way, that's one reason you say, what sets you free from all this satanic junk? The truth. The truth of the word of God. We don't have to bring in someone to cast a demon out of you. You just have the truth of the word of God. For we wrestle, verse 12, not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places. And then he goes on, and we're not going to teach that this morning, but wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day and having done all to stand. Stand therefore having your, girt, uh, your loins girt about with truth and have the breastplate of righteousness. By the way, please look up here. Truth. You say, what is truth? God's truth, the Bible's truth. Christians ought to be honest. Dev, the devil's a liar. And the Bible says, and I'll mention tonight, he's the father of liars. When we deceive each other and we lie to each other, we're allowing Satan to have place in our lives. Stand there for if you're, uh, having your, girt, <coughs> your loins girt with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness. That's God's righteousness and practical righteousness in walking with God. Verse 15, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Please look up here. Every day, Satan and his army, they're, they're throwing darts at us to weaken us. Say, what do you do to, 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 to be able to fight off Satan? You have to have faith. So how do you get faith? The Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing the word of God. Come to church and hear the preaching. Read the Bible every day. Some of us, the only time we get Bible is when we come to church. We are not going to be, listen, some of us, the truth of the matter is, we are like a spider, and, or I'm sorry, like a, like a fly that the, the, the spider is Satan, and though Satan can't do anything that we, listen, either God allows it or we allow it, Satan is a defeated foe. Jesus took all of his claws and all of his teeth out of his mouth and all of his claws out of his paws, but we allow him through deceit and lying, and we open ourselves up to Satan. You say, why? Because we're not in the Word of God. He said, above all, taking the shield of faith, where you should be able to stand or are able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Now, let me real quickly, because I don't have much time, let me give us one more verse. If you only get these verses, you'll be, look at 1 Corinthians 16, please. 1 Corinthians 16. Verse number 
1 Corinthians 16, verse number 9. First Corinthians 16, verse 9. For a great door and effectual is open unto me, and there are many. Say that, class. Can you say it again, please? We won't turn there because the time, First Peter 5, 8, the Bible says to be sober, to be vigilant. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, your what, class? The devil is as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same affliction are accomplished in your brethren. Please look up here just a moment. Let me say this. As a Christian, if you're growing, Chip, he's, he's growing. He's on fire right now for God. Can I tell you something? Open doors... Chip's got this little notebook with all the p people that he's working with or he's won to Christ. He comes to men's prayer meeting 5 o'clock every Saturday night, and he gives his prayer requests. God is opening doors to use you. He's one of, by the way, we got some weird people in our church. You're going, oh, you're the only one? I thought I, thought I was the only one who knew that. Okay. By the way, churches are filled with weird people. Okay. They just really, you say, why? Because Jesus is about the only one who will take them. Amen? By the way, Chip, I'm not saying you're weird. Actually, let me take that back. i got to be honest. I was just talking about being truthful. we got some of these guys. You know, you know what they do on Tuesday nights after, after we come back for soul winning? They go soul winning again. You know what they do on Friday nights? Friday nights, are you? They're done 9, 30, 10, 10, 30. Now my brother's doing it. They're probably not going to be staying there fellowshipping real long. 7.30, they start at 7. <laughs> you know what they do? They go out. And you know what God's doing? He's open doors. But here, here, please get this, church. As soon as you begin to really draw an eye to God, and God begins to open the doors for your purpose, guess what happens? The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 16, 9, there are many adversaries. Let me, let me say this. Our church has many open doors. We have... I was looking at West Long Beach. I was looking at the Pacific Baptist Church of West Long Beach yesterday yep. over the bridge. I'm going, man, this would be a great place to start a church. Just start a church over there and say, well, we're right here. Well, they're over there. Right. Northwest Orange County, Laos, Thailand, Fresno. I got people, I had a guy, I never heard, I never met the guy. He said, hey, man, I need your help. I'm going to start a church. He said, I heard all about you. I heard you started a church in Long Beach. You started a church in Monterey Park. He said, and you're going to start a church in northwest Orange County. He said, can you help me? I'm going, who's this guy? By the way, I spent 10 minutes on the phone with him. He wants a 30-minute appointment. Do you know what? That's an open door. We get to bless others. We have people moving here. We have this couple, they're going to move here because they speak Hmong, but they just sort of need a, sort of a, uh, some help and encouragement because they, they want to give their last years of their life to God. They've been given, but they've retired and they speak Hmong, and he's like, listen, I don't want to just relax. And he's think those are open doors. But let me say this. Like never before, Satan is attacking this church and you committed Christians like never before. You say, why? Open doors. Open doors. Some of you men, we have men in Bible college. I'm so, I'm so thrilled with our men. And by the way, just because you're not in Bible college doesn't mean you're not a good Christian. But I'll say this, I'm so thrilled. You say, what's happening? These men are really, they're, they're, they're working a the job and they're going to Bible college. And you know what they're saying? God, what do you want me to do? By the way, when you say that and you take the steps to do that, God will show you what he wants you to do. Now, if you play tootsies and play spiritual jump rope and play spiritual hopscotch, God's not going to show you anything. But you get serious about God, he's going to show you your spiritual purpose. And let me say this, it's exciting to be in God's purpose. I'm 50 years old. I've never been more excited about the will of God and about my family and about Pacific Baptist Church and about, our, uh, about the vision and about the purpose. But I'm going to say this, comes with that open doors, but also comes with that many adversaries. Many adversaries. You say, Pastor, what should we do? I got like 10 points, and I, I can only give you one. 
Be strong. Be strong. We read there in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Before he talks about the enemy and before he talks about the spiritual battle and before he talks about the, the darts, he said, be strong. Look, any of you that know anything about sports, you have to prepare for a marathon. Those of you that know anything about wrestling, boxing, you got to prepare. Too many Christians are going into the spiritual battle weak. Be strong. The future for Pacific Baptist Church is super exciting. And there are many doors. Some people say, man, there's too much going on around here. It's just not like it used to be. By the way, I don't want it to be like it used to be. Some people say, well, it's not like it used to be. I don't, you know, I'm not like center stage. I'm not center stage either. That's okay. We're not trying to do, be center stage. We want him to be center stage. I don't even know people in our church. I don't know. I, half the stuff that's going on, I don't even know. But I know a bunch of stuff is going on for the kingdom of God's sake. And I know God is raising up leaders of their spiritual people in our church, and God's preparing them. Now we have young men and middle-aged men, and now God's attracting older men. There's many open doors, but there's many adversaries. Say, Pastor, what do we need to do? We need to be a strong church. Say, how to get strong? We must be in this book. This is our spiritual vitamin B. This is our spiritual vitamin C. This is our vitamin A. These are all of our nutrients. This is all of our exercise. It's in this book. Let me ask you, did you read the Bible this morning? Recent months, I met with my two boys. I said, guys, let me tell you something. Let me, let me just tell you how this works. I said, something like this, God in his providence, is putting us, our church, on front lines. By the way, I like to be where the action is. Man, if there's not going to be action, Lord, just kill me. Take me to heaven. I don't want to be down here bored stiff. I want to be on the front lines. I want to pastor a frontline Christian. I want to challenge our church to be frontline Christians in the battle of the Lord. Not just going to cruise through. I said, boys, let me tell you something. You two guys, my oldest boys, I want to just tell you something. There's going to be many adversaries because we're on the front lines. Let me just tell you something. Adversaries might be out there. It might be somewhere. It might be in the church. But it's, 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 it's been coming, but it's going to come. And I, I met my boys, and I looked them in the eye. I don't think they've ever seen me staring them in the eye like, like I did. I said, guys, you need to be strong. I stared at him. I've never had a meeting like that. I said, guys, you need to be strong. I said, you guys have to spend more time in God's word. I said, you need to walk closer to God. I said, the enemy want to take, wants to take you guys out. I said, be strong. I got a very nice email from, from my son, Joseph, after I had that meeting. By the way, hey, dads, step up and challenge your family to be strong. We're not just here trying to not do wrong. We're not just trying to keep our kids away from drugs and pornography and alcohol and dope. That's not what it's about. We're trying to train soldiers for Jesus Christ. And soldiers for Jesus Christ need to be spiritually strong. We're not just trying to say, don't go there, don't go here. What we're trying to say is, do the will of God. God, Jesus is our general. Let's get in his army. Let's go forward. But we have to be strong. Hi, Dad. I just want to say thank you for talking to Tim and me the other day at, at the house. You talking to us challenged me to step it up in my walk with God. By the way, there's a lot of things I can talk to Joseph about. One thing, he's, got, he's, a, he's, a, he's the skinniest guy in the church. I can talk to him. You know, get some protein or something. You're going to float away one of these days. Are you anorexic? I mean, what's going on here? I can talk to him about that. You know, there's, there's, 
But you know, when I'm serious, serious talk, we want to talk about God. And I'm not going to get emails back say, oh, Dad, thank you, you know, for recommending me such and such protein. You talking to us challenged me to step up in my walk with God and to try to be even more vigilant and more and make more and make sure I'm not just teaching and giving, but that I myself am growing and making sure I'm strong like I ought to be. Lest when I preach to others, I myself should be a castaway. He said, Dad, since I was 14 or 15, he's uh, 23, 24. How old is he? Yeah, I did. He's 23, I think. 23 or 24. He says, since I was 14 or 15, I think I've only missed reading my Bible two days. He said, one, I was super, super sick and slept all day. Sluggard. Um, just kidding. He said, the other, I worked from morning till the next day and never slept getting ready for youth conference. By the way, that's the testimony I'd like to hear from my son, not that he scored 40 points in a basketball game. Not that he got a raise in pay, because he ain't getting a raise in pay around here for a long time. Dad, I, I backslid two days not reading my Bible in the last 10 years. I like that. By the way, it doesn't happen by accident. But I know that men who have done that and, and much more than I ever have have fallen. He says, I don't want to be that statistic. I know no one's exempt. He goes on to say a few other things. Thanks for caring about us enough to take the time out of your busy schedule to talk to us about this. Pastor, what's the sermon? I didn't even get to the sermon, really. I got like eight pages. You know what the sermon is? We have an enemy. Let's be strong Christians. Let's bow our heads. Let's stand together.